Not all drugs are good now. Okay, some of them are great. So put the. I'm Melba Tolliver. Signed, sealed, delivered. Israel and the Palestinians. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. But News 12's Joe Moskowitz reports it's a very cautious optimism. Israel is willing to give the Palestinians limited autonomy to some land taken during the 1967 war, land which Israel had previously fought to retain as a protective buffer from its Arab enemies. There's no guarantee that, in fact, the PLO will keep to its word, but clearly Israel is providing on their own borders these independent states. So clearly there is a tr tremendous risk Israel is taking. The village of Great Neck has a sizable Jewish population, and the agreement between Israel and the PLO has been the talk of the town. But if it works the way it's supposed to work, then it's a wonderful step. But we're all kind of holding our breaths. Are we going to be able to trust them? I hope we can trust them, because if we can't trust them, I don't know, I hope Mr. Clinton and Prime Minister of Israel know what they're going to have to do. And there are others who are praying for peace. If we really believe that Allah was watching us, would we do some of the things that we do? Afternoon services at a mosque in Roosevelt. Some of these Muslims want peace to protect Jerusalem, one of the three holiest cities in the Muslim world. Others want peace because it's about time. They have been fighting for hundreds of years and there is no true solution. And I think this is a good beginning. If they can bring all the factions, both in the Jewish group, in Israel and in the Palestinians, there will be peace. Everyone we talked with questions if this move alone will bring peace to the Middle East. But all are hoping the alternative is not acceptable. Joe Moskowitz, News 12, Long Island. About 200 Palestinian deportees are hoping the new goodwill will speed up their repatriation to Israel. They remain in southern Lebanon's so-called no man's land tonight after being tossed out of the country last winter. Today they appealed for help from the Red Cross in mediating a faster return. Yesterday, more than 180 deportees returned to Israel. The rest are expected to return by mid-December. At the World Trade Center today, a scene bearing some upsetting reminders for employees there. Three floors were evacuated in one of the towers when a fire broke out on the 59th floor, engulfing an electrical closet. The cause of the fire is not known, but officials are discounting any terrorism. In the meantime, a big price on the head of one of the suspected terrorists in the Trade Center bombing last February, President Clinton is offering a $42 million reward for Abdul Rahman Yassin, who was believed to be in hiding in Iraq. A similar reward was offered last month for a second suspect, also believed to be in Iraq. And here, the search is still on for Everett Shouter, an escaped prisoner accused in a murder case. He's been on the run since Tuesday when he managed to jump from a sheriff's van in Westbury. There had been reports that Shouter was with his girlfriend. The police would not confirm or deny that, but Shouter's mother tells News 12 that the girlfriend came by her house last night and she was not with her son. An emotional end to a bitter custody battle. A Suffolk family court judge has decided who will get permanent custody of a four-month-old boy, his mother or his father. News 12's Matt Jablow was in court and he filed this report. When it was all said and done, the bitterly fought case came down to one man, Susan Chamberlain's husband, Tom, whose violent past was cited by Judge David Freundlich as the main reason behind his long-awaited decision. In the court's mind, and considering the entirety of the circumstances and the evidence, the child needs will be better be served by Joseph Kaplan, who is in a position to offer the child the safety, security, stability, and predictability which the child legally and naturally deserves. The judge's decision provoked tears of joy from the Kaplans and tears of unmitigated anguish from Susan Chamberlain. The decision ended the well-publicized trial, which involved two weeks of testimony last month and which spelled out the most embarrassing details of the two couples' lives. Today, for the first time, the three-and-a-half-month-old baby at the heart of the case appeared in court, brought in by his mother, who calls him Shane, and brought out by his father, who calls him Benjamin. It's indescribable. You know, it's... How can you describe this? It's a finalization of all the dreams. You know, he's he finally be coming mad. home. He's gonna be home <laughs> from now. Mad. That's all. While the Kaplans were given full oh, custody of the baby, the judge did grant the Chamberlains rather extensive visitation rights every other weekend and some holidays. 
But that was not enough to console Susan Chamberlain. I went into a room, just me and Shane. And I told him that the candle was burning at the church for him. And that I loved him. I just gave him back over. Took off his little socks I put on him. <laughs> and then left. Susan Chamberlain said she's not sure yet if she'll appeal Judge Freundlich's decision. For now, she'll live with her husband and three other children at their home in Pennsylvania and no doubt cling to the memories of the infant son she fought so hard to keep. In Central Islip, Matt Jablow, News 12, Long Island. A Massachusetts Supreme Court today ruled a lesbian couple can adopt the five-year-old girl they've raised since birth. The decision is a first for Massachusetts. The parents, prominent breast cancer surgeon Dr. Susan Love and Dr. Helen Cooksey, also a surgeon, have been together for more than 10 years. The baby was conceived by Dr. Love through artificial insemination. And when the night edition continues, a huge traffic tie-up on the LIE. We'll tell you what happened. Also coming up, opening arguments in the trial of a former CW Post student charged with killing her newborn son. And Joseph Buttafuoco heads to court with a new attorney. We'll have that story in a moment. I never hopes to be sent to prison in Florida to be near his 91-year-old mother. New York's former chief judge was sentenced to 15 months in prison yesterday for harassing his ex-lover. Tonight, Walkler says he wants to serve his time at the prison at Elgin Air Force Base in Fort Walton Beach. Some critics have called the minimum security prison Club Fed. Walkler begins serving his time September 28th. Opening arguments in the trial of Stephanie Wernick, a former CW Post student accused of killing her newborn baby in a dormitory bathroom. News 12's Julie Kessler was in court. In their opening statements, both prosecuting and defense attorneys referred to Stephanie Wernick's uncontrollable sobbing in court. The prosecution told the jury not to forget Wernick is not the victim. But this case is not about Stephanie Wernick. This case is a case involving an infant male child that suffered an excruciating death. And if she cried then, that baby would be alive today. While prosecuting attorney Peck describes the act as cold, calculating, and describes Wernick as completely in control, her defense attorney paints a totally different picture, describing Wernick as a young woman with a low IQ who had no idea that she was pregnant, no idea that she killed her own baby, no idea that she dumped the infant into a trash can. When she could deny no more the existence of that child, that she suffered a psychotic break with reality. Gehring is trying to prove Wernick is not responsible for her actions because of a mental disease, what's called a temporary psychotic break. But the prosecution called the first police officer who arrived on the scene to the stand, trying to establish Wernick deliberately, knowingly, stuffed scene. multiple wads of tissue down the baby's throat. So I reached in with my finger to pull, out, pull the tongue out, and I uh, found a large uh, piece of paper about the size of a golf ball. Uh, lodge in the baby's throat. Wernick is charged with manslaughter and assault. If convicted on these charges, she faces up to 25 years in prison. Both the prosecution and the defense plan to use psychologists as witnesses to confirm Wernick's psychological condition. On Monday, the prosecution plans to call witnesses who knew Wernick personally and were at the scene at the time of the incident. In Mineola, Julie Kessler, News 12, Long Island. Joseph Buttafuoco's menacing trial was supposed to get underway today in another Nassau courtroom, but it was delayed. However, Buttafuoco did make a court appearance and for the first time with a new lawyer. His body shop business would have to run on its own for a few hours. There was that menacing teens with a starter pistol charge slapped on him by the DA's office to handle. And at Joey Buttafuoco's side now, his new legal eagle. Long Island attorney Dominic Barbara of Jessica Hahn fame. Court is a lot like the military. Hurry up and wait. An hour and 15 minutes after Buttafuoco and Barbara walked into the courtroom, including an eight-minute conference, the menacing case was postponed. But the first order of business before Judge John Galasso was to make Buttafuoco's dumping of attorney Marvin Kornberg for Dominic Barbara official. Mr. Buttafuoco, 
have you discharged your other attorney? Yes, I have. And you've retained this attorney? Yes, I have. All right. The, uh, Mr. Kornberg is relieved on the file. Barbara would then call for the menacing case jurors to be discharged, even though technically none had been selected. Only a dozen or so questioned. The DA's office and the judge had no objection. I do not want the jury to start to speculate why Mr. Kornberg was discharged or why Mr. Barbara was hired. So I think it's in the interest of justice and especially the interest of justice uh, with respect to this defendant that the uh, jury be discharged. Attorney Barbara also motioned the case be adjourned until November 24th, meaning it would start after Buttafuoco had gone to trial for the alleged statutory rape of Amy Fisher, who claimed she was Joey's lover. Fisher is now in prison for shooting Buttafuoco's wife, Mary Jo, in the head. Sex before menacing is the way the prosecution wants it to. The statutory rape case should proceed first, that being the more significant case, the case that occurred first in terms of chronological sequence and the case that, uh, uh, you know, has the greatest penal sanctions. Schoenberg refused to speculate on whether there would even be a menacing case depending on how the statutory rape trial came out. And outside the courthouse, but a Fuco attorney Barbara said he wouldn't be discussing either case. He will heed a court gag order. I want to tell you that there will be no comments at all about this case or the county court case uh, from my office or, of course, from Mr. Butterfuco or his family. Uh, we just want to thank all of you and particularly uh, thank the court and the district attorney's office today for all the cooperation. Thank you. Scott Feldman, News 12, Long Island. But Fuco is to be back in court on Monday for another conference on his statutory rape case. Police say a Woodmere youngster was sexually abused in her neighborhood last night. The 11-year-old girl was walking near her house when police say a man knocked the girl to the ground, fondled her, and ran off. The girl was not seriously hurt. In the Bronx, a transit worker goes on a rampage and kills a co-worker from Long Island and then himself. Shooting happened in a train yard this morning. Police say John O'Brien shot and killed 25-year-old Richard Charles of Elmont. He also critically wounded another worker. On O'Brien's body, police found a plastic bag with nearly a dozen rounds of ammunition. He was wanted in Maryland, and now he's been caught in Melville. 20-year-old Jabbar Rogers of Wyandance is charged with an armed carjacking in Maryland last May. Police nabbed Rogers yesterday at Esty Lauder in Melville, where he works. Rogers is awaiting extradition back to Maryland. Dozens were injured after a tractor trailer and a tour bus bound for Long Island crashed on the New Jersey Turnpike. Police say the Tri-State Tours bus heading for a fishing trip on the island rear-ended a truck. 26 people were injured in the crash, including the bus driver, who was pinned inside the wreck for two hours before being airlifted to the hospital. The driver of the truck was not hurt. And an extra frustrating rush hour for some Long Island commuters tonight. They were delayed more than an hour on the Long Island Expressway after a tractor trailer jackknifed and spilled diesel fuel. The westbound LIE was closed between exits 40 and 41 while the truck was removed and the mess cleaned up. Very bad, very bad. I'm one hour on the road waiting over there. It's very bad. Well, traffic was also delayed near the Lakeview Avenue exit because of another tractor-trailer accident there.